Hello there, I'm Lloyd Evans. Welcome to The Bunker. It's time for another voicemail. Today's voicemail is from an anonymous caller. Let's listen to what they have to say. Hi Lloyd. Um, I am a little bit late to the party. I've only just um, discovered your YouTube channel and I'm really glad that I have. Um, I am 30 now. I left Jehovah's Witnesses when I was 17, 16 or 17. Um, I was baptised at 14. Um, and I haven't really had a relationship with my mum and dad um, ever since. I sort of, they didn't kick me out or anything um, while I was still living under their roof. Uh, but then as soon as I kind of went off for off to uni and lived by myself that was it and I don't really have a relationship with them now like they won't speak to me um or my brother my brother won't speak to me either I think he is very very zealous and goes off and preaches in far-flung countries now um but my question is and this is something I've been thinking about for a long time is if I was to go back um oh I don't know if I mentioned I was disfellowshipped I wasn't um I didn't fade away I was disfellowshipped um for having sex before marriage um and my question is if I was to go back and sort of almost pay lip service in a way to kind of get myself reinstated I just would I don't know how easy that would be um and I don't really know what would be involved sort of this this far down the line I'm I live in a completely different um territory to where my mum and dad were and where the you know and the congregation that I was disfellowshipped from um I I was disfellowshipped in um sort of Chesterfield area and I live in Manchester now so I don't know whether it would be a case of finding like the local um the local witnesses and being reinstated there I'm not really sure how it would work I don't know if it would be worth it and and how easy it would be um and whether I'd have to make a lot of sacrifices um yeah so it's just something that I've been thinking about for a long time and is it something that I should consider doing to perhaps have a you know salvage a relationship with my parents or is it not worth doing that is my question um thank you very much for making all these videos and I I feel um I feel like I am sort of part of a community now which is something that I've never really had before I kind of felt a little bit isolated in my upbringing because nobody had the same upbringing as me and hearing people on your channel talk about the upbringing that they've had it just it's really great so thank you for that well thank you for that message wow what a predicament it's a dilemma that lots of people face, by the way. I've even, I think, done voicemails on this before. People calling in saying, should I get reinstated so that my family won't shun me anymore? Is essentially your question. And I think, to a degree, you've sort of answered it already. You say, I don't know if it would be worth it. Well, there's your answer. Either it's worth it or it isn't. You should know, I, I would suggest, I would recommend. If you're going to go back to an organisation that you know is abusive and manipulative and wrong and pay lip service, as you put it, make the the right noises, say the things that they want to hear, surely it should be worth doing that, you know? What's the prize? What's the pot of gold at the end of that process? It's to have a relationship with two parents and a brother who will only talk to you if you share their religious beliefs. 
is that a relationship? You know? And don't get me wrong, I really do sympathise. I've spoken before about the whole nuclear family situation that I grapple with. It really messes with my head, quite frankly, that the entire family that I grew up with is no longer there or has nothing to do with me, either through death, because my mother died when I was 21, or in the case of my father and sister, because of shunning. And I'm not going to say too much about my sister, but um, certainly with my father, it's clear that the reason why my father will not speak to me and still hasn't met his two grandchildren, my two daughters, is because we left Jehovah's Witnesses. And it messes with you, I think. that That's a messed up situation. What it means is that my life now and my family is completely different than the one that saw me all the way through to, I'm going to say, between the ages of 21 and 30. That's, that's a weird thing to get your head around, bearing in mind that many people continue to have a relationship with their parents and their siblings for decades you know, right on into their own middle age, old age, whatever. It's a strange thing to come to terms with, and I really do sympathise with you. Ultimately, the decision as to whether you get reinstated or not is yours to make. I can't make that decision for you. Nobody can make that decision for you. But again, I feel like you've sort of answered the dilemma. Because, again, if you're not sure whether it's worth it or not, don't do it, you know? You're going to pretend? You're going to pretend to believe something so that people will like you? You know, what does it say about those people if they will only like you, if they will only treat you as a daughter or as a sister if you say the right things you know what does that say about them do you really need those sorts of people in your life i would suggest perhaps you don't need those sorts of people in your life perhaps you need to be surrounded by people who care about you and love you for who you are and what you really believe, not what you claim to believe just to make a few people happy, but what your authentic, true beliefs are. But I sympathize. And again, it's a dilemma that many people face. Some people, for whatever reason, just cannot cope with the shunning. They can't cope with it. And they've got to engineer things so that they can um, not be disfellowshipped anymore. And I get it. I really do get it. Ultimately, we're all responsible for our own mental health. and We've got to do what's right for us. Even if it doesn't make all that much sense, ultimately, we're responsible for our happiness. We're responsible for kind of making it through this messed up thing called life as best as we possibly can. I just think it's best, personally speaking, when you can live your life free from conditional love and when those around you, those in your immediate circle, love and appreciate you for who you are rather than a set of beliefs that you have to pay lip service to. So hopefully there's some things to think about there. And again, many people will, will relate to your dilemma. I'm sure some people watching this voicemail are going through the same dilemma right now. That's how common I believe this is. So I really do appreciate you calling in 
and sharing this dilemma. I hope you're able to resolve it somehow. And to all of those going through a, the same dilemma, again, you have my sympathy and solidarity and you just have to make the decision that's right for you. Anyway, if you would like to leave a voicemail, the thing to do is go to speakpipe.com forward slash cedars, remembering to indicate clearly if you don't want me to broadcast your message on this channel. But that's all we have time for. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.